Hey everyone, it's Liberty CVB and we are live in the kitchen now uh, with for another edition of our Southern Cooks video series. And today we have Miss Henrietta Relliford Weaver with us. She's from Riceboro and she is going to be showing us how to cook cabbage and hoe cake. So we're very excited to welcome her here today. Um, so we're going to go ahead and let you take it away. Okay. Hi everyone. As you know, as you heard, my name is Henrietta Relliford Weaver. Some of you may recognize that name or recognize me. Um, I'm the owner of Henrietta's Art of Baking. And um, not only do I bake, but I'm a very good cook. And today I'm going to do a recipe out of my book. Now this may sound like a, a title, Clothes for Menopause, but actually in this book is I have a recipe of the dish I'm doing today for comfort foods. And it is cabbage. Now, I am a Southern cook, and I grew up eating cabbage. Uh, I'm just going to show you a tasty way that you can have cabbage without all the fat in it that I grew up with. You know, the fat back, <laughs> the neck bones, the pigtails, you know, all that stuff. And the cabbage still tastes really, really good. Now, today I have um, the recipe with, uh, we have carrots red, yellow, and orange peppers, which makes a beautiful dish. We have garlic and onions in this dish. And of course, we have our, ca our cabbage. Also, fresh thyme. Okay, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you, I have things cut up, but I'm going to show you the, how to cut up the vegetables. Because if, if it is cut up too large, it would change the taste totally. How did, how did you just get that to look like that? I didn't oh, okay. see that step. All right. I layered it after I break the green leaves. And please, please, people, it's important that you get the cabbage with the beautiful green leaves. I know a lot of people don't like that because I've gone in the grocery store and I find green leaves broken off. So get the cabbage with the beautiful green leaves, you pop it up, the vein, you know, that vein that's in the middle there, mm -hmm. and you rinse the cabbage, and then you layer it, like, put it on top of each other, and then you roll it. Okay, so kind of like a taco. Kind of like a taco, or an egg roll, you know? Yeah, egg roll. And you have to cut it real thin. And this is very, very important that you cut the cabbage like this real thin because if it's cut too large, it will totally change the taste of this dish. Same vegetables cut different will change the taste and the flavor of this dish totally. That's now the peppers. I only have the red pepper because I've already cut the other peppers. This also have to be done julienne style, very thin. Again, as I said, this is very important to do. Cut real thin. I just wanted to get a chance to show you. I've already had them cut up. Our carrot has to be cut also thin. This is the way that I do it. As you see, I cut it in half and then go long ways and just cut thin. This is a very good... And if I get it too thick, I just go right in the center of it and cut it again. Very cool. Okay. Now I've had the, the onions cut up. The onions got to be sliced and real thin. No dicing, no chopping. It has to be sliced. Okay. And I'm just going to take this and put it with my ones that I have cut up over here. Now run us through again what we're making today because we have some new viewers who've joined in. Cabbage. You can call it stir-fried cabbage if you want. Oh, it's just a different way of cooking cabbage. Uh, since everybody, a lot of people, is health conscious today. Now, like I said, I don't... Let me turn my stove down a little because I have the EVO in my cast iron frying pan. Now, let me tell you, the first time I got familiar with extra virgin olive oil and i heard someone say evo i'm saying what in the world is evo extra virgin olive oil okay but and i cook it in a cast iron frying pan this is a very good if you're familiar with now i grew up with cooking in a cast iron frying pan 
but there are some people that may not be familiar with cooking in the frying, mm -hmm. this type of frying pan, but get you a pan that's heavy, no thin. The bottom cannot be thin, okay? And uh, the question that you asked was, Nothing, just to run over what we are making again, oh, just for new people who've just joined in, because we've had several new viewers join us. Oh, cabbage that's uh, cooked, uh, like I said, you can call it stir fry, but it's a different way to cook cabbage that really tastes good. It really tastes good without all the fat back, the pigtail, the neck bones, which I grew up on, and trust me, it does taste good. <laughs> but the older I get, I cannot eat those type things in there, so... This, and it's good for any age, mm -hmm. healthy, okay? Mm -hmm. Now the first thing I'm going to do, and th the reason is I put the veggies in that takes the longest to cook, and I'm going to um, put my onions and garlic in first because I want the pan seasoned mm -hmm. with the onion and garlic. So I'm just going to, and, and you have to keep stirring it. Now the cast iron frying pan, it takes a minute to get hot, and you got to be very careful in cooking with this pan. But once it get hot, it is hot. So we just got to keep stir, you know, stirring it, let it get cooked some. My next dish I'm going to put in would be my carrots, because the carrots, it takes longer to cook. Now, as I said, the only reason I put the onions and garlic in first because I want the pan seasoned mm -hmm. with the onion and garlic to get that flavor through. And you just kind of saute it in your pan. Okay, and I'm going to add the carrots in. And it depends. You have to just keep checking your, your dish to see if we need to add any more oil. At this time, it's quite enough in there. And we just coated the bottom of the pan with the EVO, right? Yes. Just enough to cover the bottom of mm -hmm. the pan. And if you, while you're cooking, if you see that you might need to put a little more, don't be afraid. Just put, put a little, little, little more in there. Okay. Yeah, we mentioned earlier, Southern cooks, we don't measure anything. <laughs> no. If you ask me for a recipe when I'm cooking, I can tell you what I put in there, but certain things, I just don't have a recipe. Now, when I'm doing my cakes, of course, there is a recipe to that. But with cooking, now I can tell you, this is about um, three, three to four carrots, mm -hmm. a half of an onion, uh, two cloves of garlic. That's what I have in this pan right now. And I have to keep adjusting my stove because you really got to be familiar with your stove that you're cooking on. Mm -hmm. So I'm not too familiar with this stove, but I can adjust to it. And I just need this to cook. And it's going to take a, you know, just be patient. And you got to be patient when you're mm -hmm. making southern food. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, so just let it cook and stir, keep it stirred. Now while that's cooking some, let me set this over here. Now these are my peppers. Not only does this dish taste good, good but it is a very beautiful dish. Very colorful dish. I'm going to just stir right just a little more. Now, why do we have the green cabbage leaves on the top and the whiter <clears throat> stuff at the bottom? Because the green leaves takes longer to cook. Okay, okay. So I put them in the okay. pan before I put the, the head of the mm -hmm. cabbage in. And I stir fry that for a little bit before I put the rest of the cabbage in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So make sure. Now, see how pretty these leaves are? They are pretty. And I tell you, when I go in the store and see people have broke the green ones off and it's just laying all over the place and believe it or not the green the green leaves are where most of your nutrients your vitamins mm -hmm. your minerals your nutrients yeah. so make sure you get those green leaves the more things i put in it takes the mm -hmm. heat down so i just keep turning it up 
But again, if you're not familiar with cooking in a cast iron frying pan, get a frying pan that you know how, what you know, that you're familiar with. Now this is a recipe you created, correct? Um, one day I went to a, a restaurant and they had not quite this, but it was good. Mm -hmm. And I went home and I wanted that dish, you know, and I just, it's, it's somewhat partially mine. Mm -hmm. I made it my own. You know, that's important. And in my cookbook, um, Romancing Your Cakes, I talk about that. I talk about people taking a recipe and just making that recipe their own mm -hmm. because you can do what, whatever you like. You mm -hmm. can create. And I talk about being very creative in the kitchen. So, and it's in my, in my book. It's very, very good. So if you get a chance, go online, Amazon.com, and check out my books. And it was called again? Romancing Your Cakes. Your Cakes. And the second one with this recipe that I'm doing now is closed for menopause. Okay. <laughs> and we'll make sure we put the links up later if anybody wants to follow mm -hmm. those. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and put my peppers in now. And I may not need all of this for the amount of cabbage you have to, um, but I need all of the colors mm -hmm. in here. I need all the colors of my... And I don't know if you can hear it or see, but each time I put a different dish in, it takes the temperature of the pan down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have to keep adjusting it. Well, we can certainly smell it, and you guys are missing out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need smell a television. Yeah, smell a vision. <laughs> smell a vision. Really. Now, as I said, I um, added more stuff, and I can look at the bottom of my pan. And I can judge that I need just a little more of the EVO. So I just put a little more in. Okay. And stir. That's great. It's looking good. I just got to make sure it's... Um, Just kind of let it simmer and keep stirring it. Let's see if I need a little more pepper. I think that might be enough peppers for the amount of cabbage that we have. And sometimes you also have to keep, when I get everything in, not all the time, but you got to keep an eye on your dish to make sure it's not drying out. Mm -hmm. right. Sometimes you might have to put a tap bit of water. Uh, and I do mean a little, little water in there, but it looks very good now. Because one thing, if you rinse your vegetables, it's like moist. So mm -hmm. when you put it in the pan, you've got that moisture in there. Right. So you have to, you know, just rinse off all your veggies. Now what I have here is fresh thyme. Fresh thyme, uh, you just put that in. Mm, that smells yeah, good. Smell mm, yeah, even more intense. <laughs> you put that in and you, you see, it's a beautiful dish, isn't it? Yeah, now, I was telling you a little bit about myself, and if I mention one of my main things that I created. Probably a lot of you know what I'm talking about. I don't know if any of you have ever seen the TV segment with the Dean Boys, with me making my trademark signature item called Henrietta's Original Key West Coconut Strips. Mm -hmm. And you go, if you go on like that, you, you would definitely see that. So well, that's how we recipe. get that today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's a that's a that's really time consuming, oh, okay. you know, it's a process to that and that's a trademark item. Oh, okay. So many people was trying to duplicate my recipe and I had it trademarked. Oh, the time smells good. That doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It really smells good. I wonder if the others that's out there smell it through the wall. They, yeah, they uh, did. If I smell in the hallway. In the hallway? Mm -hmm. And they'll come in to eat when we're finished. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. 
Now, when I finish this dish as it's simmering, I'm going to um, go over and make some whole cakes. Okay. Now, whole cakes is really a southern thing. I mean, really southern from way back my uh, ancestors. And I just want to give you a little story of the whole cakes, mm -hmm. where it got its name from, because it's made with, uh, back then, it was only made with cornmeal and water. But um, when the slaves were out in the field, um, they could not have time to go back to eat their lunch. Mm -hmm. So what, had, what they had to do, the hoe that they were chopping with, they actually took that hoe, cleaned it off, put, dig a hole in the ground, put a fire there. They took that hoe, and it's a long story, which I'm not going to go in, but they only had to eat the... Um, like from the pork, from the, mm -hmm. they, the fatty fat from the pork. So they put a piece of that fat on the hoe, ho, held it over the fire. They mixed up cornmeal and water and cook it because that's the only thing they had to eat. Mm -hmm. And that's where the whole cake got its name from, oh, whole cakes. When it says whole cakes, they really mm -hmm. mean that was whole little. cakes. That's, yeah. that's what it was. And that's what... what don't worry, I don't have a hole in here and I'm not digging. <laughs> I'm not going to hold a hole over the ground to cook. That's good. Do we need to turn the oil on for the whole cake? Uh, no, because okay. this guy still got some time to go. Okay. Which I'm going so to. Cast iron skillets take some time to heat up. And one important thing also, do not overcook your vegetables. The vegetables, if they cook and they get, um, let me see, what the, uh, wimpy, mushy, or, mushy yeah. you have overcooked them and you've cooked all your nutrient, minerals, and vitamins out. So it has to be kept with a slightly done, but a little crunchy taste. And now I'm going to go ahead and put my cabbage in and probably add a little, I'm just going to add right now the green. Does that take longer to cook? Yes, okay. it takes longer to cook. and get that in there. And I'm gonna just stir this up in there. And here is now where I'm gonna just have to add just a tiny bit of water. I just add it. And let that cook. It's not going to boil, you know, like boiled cabbage. It just helps steam it mm -hmm. to, to um, get it It's just going to take a little time, but it'll get there. It'll get there. So run over again real quick what we have in there. We have our extra virgin olive oil. We have fresh garlic. Everything in here is fresh vegetables, fresh garlic. We have carrots, um, red, yellow, orange peppers. Mm -hmm. Those are the peppers that go in this dish. Uh, I know a lot of people, and I, lo I love cooking with the green bell pepper, yeah. but it doesn't do this dish justice. Mm -mm. And it would change the taste of the dish because mm -hmm. that pepper tastes totally different right. from the red, yellow, orange peppers. And we have, of course, our cabbage. And, of course, again, remember the green leaves from the cabbage is very important. And how old is your cast iron skillet, Mr. Nader? Oh, my Lord. I can't even <laughs> tell you. It was grand seasoned. Yes, from Grandma. Okay. You know, back in the days from when we used to... Well, I wasn't there then, but, you know, Ma and Pa mm -hmm. and Grandma and Grandpa. Now it's grandfather, grandmother, or mama, dad, you know. Yeah. But this, this cast iron frying, frying pan is very old. I can't really tell you the years, but it's been around since way back, you know, grandmama and daddy. And even before. Because actually at one time, the cast iron cookware was basically what they used. 
So this is, you know, and it's, it is well seasoned. Yeah, you can tell it's well seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Okay, and um, I love cooking. I love cooking with the cast iron. I mean, I have the up-to-date pots and pans, but for some reason, it maybe it's in my mind, but mm -hmm. it makes the food taste better. Mm -hmm. It does. <laughs> it does. We had a lady come and do fried chicken for us, and she only fries her chicken in a cast iron. Oh, oh, exactly. And people may not believe it, but honestly, it's a, it makes it taste better. Now I see that I'm going to have to put a tad bit more water. Yeah. And you're just seeing that the bottom of the skillet is kind of dry. Yes. Yes. Okay. See, now in the bottom of the skillet, you see it's got some moisture in there, some oil and water. Mm -hmm. And I hope everyone is getting this recipe, so the next time you have guests over, you can do this, and they would, you would get such rave over this dish. <laughs> Again, each time I put something different in, is most of the times I have to add, um, add maybe some olive oil or some water to it because each thing takes up moisture to cook in like it's supposed right. to. And I'm just going to put this in here and let it steam a little bit. A little more water. I just put enough water to keep it in that stir-fry mold, if I can call it that, <laughs> without um, overcooking it. And I believe that it's going to be enough cabbage for the um, for the pan. Mm -hmm. And to keep it that great consistency and that pretty color. Okay, I'm just going to let that steam a little bit. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to keep a check on it and keep stirring it. But I'm going to go over here and get my whole cake ready. Right. Now we have the whole cakes, as I said. It, back in the days, it was only cornmeal and water. But thank God we can have some, oh, let me say this. I am not measuring this. I grew up a Southern cook, and most of the times the Southerners just did not measure. We just pour, <laughs> like they say, eyeball it. Yeah. And that's uh, this is yellow cornmeal that I'm using. Right. Now, this is self-rising, uh -huh. but the older people, our ancestors, knew nothing about self-rising. So when they cooked those whole cakes, it did not rise. It just mm -hmm. sat on there, but it was something for them to eat. Right. So I'm just putting some, that looked like about two cups right there. Okay, if, if I have to guess, that looked like about two cups. And then I'm going to put a, just a little flour, because whole cake is actually, um, and this is all also self-rising flour. And I'm going to do one egg. I haven't, I, as long as I've been baking, I have not, not yet got to win where I can break an egg with one hand. <laughs> and milk, let me put the egg. Uh-oh, you have to excuse me. And also in here, which I have, is just a tip, a little sugar, all, a little sugar in there. 
And I'm going to go back and forth because I'm going to keep stirring my dish over here. Because when the dish gets ready over here, I want the whole cakes cooking. Because if you're not hungry, if you smell this, you really would get hungry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just ate lunch not long ago, and I'm getting hungry already. Mm -hmm. I did turn your oil on for you a little. Okay, okay. very good. What do you have? I put it on three. You want to a little bit higher? Okay. Let me just put that back in there. I, I can't leave my green. Okay. As I said, I'm going to be going back and forth. Now I'm going to add some milk. Stir it. Now in the whole cakes, you just kind of know what consistency you want your whole cakes to be. Now, a lot of people call this, um, growing up, it was called Johnny Cake, and there is such a thing as Johnny Cake. Johnny Cake is made mostly from flour, and uh, some people, we, my cousins would call it fried bread, mm -hmm. or cornbread cooked on top of the stove, but that's what it is. Somebody said Johnny Pancakes. <laughs> Johnny Pancakes? Okay, now I didn't put any water in here, but like I said, back then it was only cornmeal and water. And you know what? That's all it is. And you fry it in uh, oil, and it is really eaten with... Uh, is it just kind of a thick batter? Yeah, a thick batter of a cornbread. And that's, that's what the uh, whole cakes are. I mean, this is the new style whole cakes. Not the ones cooked on the hoe in the Not ground. Not the ones cooked on the hoe in the ground. Um, and actually, when my oil get ready, I'm going to drop a few of them in there. Because this dish is cooking real good. It's very pretty. Now, do we put any salt and pepper in there? Oh, yes. Okay. I'm going to do that right at the... Well, actually, I can do that. I just couldn't remember if we had or not. Not yet. Okay. But and it, and to be honest with you, this dish only needs a little salt and pepper because you see those peppers, garlic, they have their own flavor, and it really seasons this nicely. Mm -hmm. So you don't put a whole lot of salt and pepper unless when you get it on your plate, it's <laughs> not it's not seasoned enough. So I'm just going to put a little. Of that and a little black pepper, not not too much. Somebody and Jasmine says it looks delicious. Thanks, Jasmine. I am so sorry you're not here to taste it. Oh, she'll be here in a little while, I'm yeah. sure. Okay. <laughs> And you're going to put a little bit of sugar in there? A too? little sugar, okay. just to enhance the taste, not a lot. Okay, I see I need a little bit more water in here. That glass was full of water and you really haven't used very much. No, very little. Here and there. Very little. Yeah. But if you don't put the water, it starts to kind of stick and what mm -hmm. wouldn't be, it would not give me that consistency of what I want it to be. Actually, this is about ready. Let me see my oil over here for my whole cake. I think we're going to have to beat the people in this building off of this kitchen. Keep them away from our food. Let me just put a tiny bit and see. Nope, it's not ready. Um, so I don't know. Let me just turn this up a little. Now, what told you it wasn't ready? You see, when I put that in there, it just sat there. Happens. Nothing happened. No bubbling. No bubbling. No, you know, it would float to the top, or you know. Something would happen. You will see little bubbles, but something would definitely happen if that was ready. And I'm going to have to get it hot and then turn it down. Now 
Now, I know I had to start my broadcast over again because we lost our connection. So, for the people that have joined in again, do you want to tell them what we've made and what we have in there for the cabbage dish? Oh, we have, I said that you can call it stir-fried cabbage if you would like to. And we have uh, carrots, garlic, fresh, everything is fresh. Onion, yellow, red, orange peppers, cabbage, uh, fresh thyme. That's what's in this dish. Mm -hmm. And it's cooked with EVO, extra virgin olive oil. I tell some people that now because, like I said, when I first started and heard someone always talking about EVO, I'm like, what in the world is EVO? <laughs> extra virgin mm -hmm. olive oil. Yeah, I said that earlier this week and somebody called me Rachel Ray. Yeah, that's right. That's what she Rachel says. Ray. All the time she does not. I guess she said, ah, oh, that's a mouthful. Extra virgin mm, olive oil, is. EVO. Okay. I'm going to um, turn this off now because I don't want it to overcook. Okay. But that's your dish, right? And it is going to be crunchy, but it's, trust me. It's a very beautiful dish. Okay, I see my oil over here mm -hmm. for my whole cake. See, you see the difference? Mm -hmm. It's floated and you see the little bubbles? Mm -hmm. So the oil is getting as ready. Let me drop, ah, drop one, let's see. Pardon my sneeze. You can make these as big or as small as you want to. Okay, it's cooking. It could be a little hotter. Let me just leave this here for mm -hmm. a minute. I'm going to make them small. So let me just make one big one. Well, larger. Now, um, I like to make my whole cakes with uh, that amount of oil in it. And I assume that maybe because when they used to make, growing up in Georgia, they didn't have a whole lot of oil, you know, so they was very cautious of the oil that they used. And perhaps that's why. Let me get my cloth over here. Maybe um, that's why that... Um, we have a viewer that wants to know why you can't use regular olive oil in your... You can, but extra virgin olive oil is just a more healthier way. You can use, to be honest with you, you can use whichever oil you want. Mm -hmm. If you want to use uh, vegetable oil, but it would not taste to me, it wouldn't be the same. And I think extra virgin olive oil has a different flavor. Yes, it does. Yeah, they all have, I mean, when you get to cooking and you eat your cooking yes. all the time, you know that you can kind of tell the difference between different oils that you cook with. Yes, you can. I want to make sure this isn't sticking. Do we need to put it in the plating dish? Not right okay. now, because I want it to stay warm. Gotcha. So when I get my whole cakes ready, I don't want it to be... You see how they're fluffing up? Mm -hmm. Now I'm just making them this size and like this, but like I said, oh. you don't have to use this much oil in it. You can just put a little oil and kind of cook it like pancakes or something. And it, it, to be honest with you, it won't be this greasy. I can smell the cornbread. Mm -hmm. It's fried cornbread goodness, people. Ah. <laughs> We're not and sharing. When I take it out, I'm going to put it on this platter with paper towels to absorb some of the oil that I'm cooking with. Now remind us what went in the batter for this. Uh, cornmeal, mm -hmm. flour, egg, milk. Okay. I didn't use the water this time, but you can use water and milk. I just had a choice not to use milk today. And you can mash them down. Whole cakes are used. And you put just a little bit of sugar? A little bit of sugar, just thank you. Bit. Just a little bit. No measuring. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> Grow up with the southern cooking, I tell you, I did not. Let me just put that there. Mm -hmm. I did not do any measuring. 
certain things I do mention. Mm -hmm. Now, this could have, like I said, it could have been a little less oil than this, but it's okay. It's going to still taste good, and we're going to still eat it. Oh, yes. It smells really, really good. I'm just really trying good. to get it brown on both sides. And it has to be done in the center. We love Friday show days. We ah. eat well. You could tell it was done just because it was brown. Brown so and it's floating, kind of floating. Okay. Now that's a small whole cake. Some whole cakes are big. Mm -hmm. I'm just choosing to do it this way. And you have your own choice to do it, when, you know. Uh, we have to share with a lot of people, so it's probably better that we have some. That's what, that's what I thought about. Because mm -hmm. like, I, I only made, and I we didn't make a whole door. lot. We, we did lock the door, <laughs> but it's true. I'm going to get these out. Let me get these out. Some people might say this look like hush puppies. This kind of look like mm -hmm. hush puppies. But hush puppy has more seasoning in it. Mm -hmm. They have... Um, Now, are hoe cakes a, an everyday thing or a special occasion? Special thing? occasion. Okay. I mean, back in the days, you didn't tell, you might, didn't never know when you might find a whole cake on the table. Mm -hmm. But now people are really kind of getting away. But, uh, you know, rest, some restaurants are now mm -hmm. serving whole cakes. A resurgence of the um, heritage foods. Yes. We can see how the, the oil is bubbling now. Yeah, you see now, right? Turning it down a little bit. I'm turning it down because it's getting... Now, it's, that's what we t I tell you about these frying pans. Mm -hmm. It takes a minute for a cast iron frying pan to really get hot. But once it's hot, watch out. You really got to watch it. And I'm just turning these to keep it from getting too brown. I keep turning them from side to side. And... Um, I want them nice and golden brown, not burnt. She makes it look really easy, but it's not always easy to turn things in a frying pan yeah. with oil too without breaking them apart. That takes some skill and some talent. I tell you. And okay. Practice. Lots of practice. I break pancakes on the griddle. Now <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to put my cabbage in this beautiful dish, this gorgeous dish. I'm just going to lay it here. How pretty. Very pretty. And everything smells really, really good. Mm -hmm. You got to be multi talent when you're cooking more than one dish at one time. Mm -hmm. Now, um, when you eat hoe cakes, do you eat them? Do you put butter on them or anything like that? No, no, no. They don't need anything on them. Now, I tell you what, a lot of people, if I made them a little more rounder, and uh, a lot of people eat it with syrup. That's how we, ah, you know, okay. they grew up with it. Okay. Let me just get this. I'm so, but you know, and when I was growing up, my gra and my grandmother and my mother was teaching me to cook. They say, make sure you get everything out of that pan. Don't waste, Don't waste anything. That's enough for um, somebody else could have had that. You know, here is your cabbage. Just one. Your cabbage dish, which is, excuse me for reaching over, but i got to get these out. I don't want them to uh, burn. Okay, let me turn that off and that's off. I'm going to clean off the edge of my plate. And... Your whole cakes and your
your cabbage. Yum. Gorgeous. Very pretty. Oh, and they're going to be delicious too. Yes. Okay. Where are the plates? We are going to get, let's plate one plate for our picture purposes. The white, the pretty white plate that's over there. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to sign off? Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, well, Miss Henrietta, we really appreciate you coming in today and cooking for us. And um, we will be posting this on our YouTube channel. It's Liberty CVB. Um, our YouTube channel is Liberty County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Okay. Um, and we'll make sure to put the ingredients and everything up on there in the description on the video. Um, but look for us next time. Next month, we'll have a new uh, video out with Southern Cooks. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Here's your